Hello Plymouth Township, I'm Timothy Kiernan from your 2018 Public Safety Committee and I'm here with Dan Phillips, Chief of our Fire Department. Hi Tim, how are you? Doing well Dan. And I'm here with two other people also on the 2018 Public Safety Committee with me and they are... Hi, I'm Jennifer Wells. And I'm Steve Yaros. And we're here to talk about Engine 3 tonight. Know your vehicles. Engine 3. Dan, could you introduce yourself to the viewers? Yeah, I'm Dan Phillips. I'm uh, the Fire Chief of the Plymouth Township Fire Department. I've been employed by Plymouth Township for 26 years. All right. And I'm here with some other members of the Public Safety Committee for 2018. Let's start with you, Jen. Hi, I'm Jennifer Wells. I've been a Plymouth uh, Township resident for six years. Uh, and I am uh, Stephen Yaros. I have actually been a resident for just under a year, uh, so glad to be here. And I should probably mention that I am a resident of three years standing. So thank you for joining us, not only here today, but also in all the committee meetings, which are very productive. It's a functional committee. I never thought there was such a thing, but we have it. And what we're talking about today is Engine 3. What is Engine 3, Chief? What are we looking at here today? Engine 3 is a 1992 uh, dash pumper manufactured by Pierce Manufacturing. The difference between this dash and Engine, engine two, 2 is this one has a completely enclosed cab. I noticed that as we look at that here in the video. That's so the men and the women of the service can be protected on the way to a call, they're not just hanging off the sides of the truck like in the old days. That's right. In Engine 2, which is the, has the open cab design, uh, that's illegal. You can't purchase that type of vehicle anymore. Mm -hmm. um, engine 3 is a fire pumper. That is the truck that delivers the water to the fire. Um, it has a large pump in the center to deliver large volumes of water from your fire hydrants onto the seat of a fire. And it brings some water with it when it goes on a call and has a tank in it? Uh, yep, it has, a, it has a smaller tank of about 750 gallons of water. Now, uh, do we have other types of uh, trucks in the fleet besides uh, pumpers? Um, in Plymouth Township, all we have is pumpers. We are lacking a aerial, and an aerial, aerial we would use to do high angle rescue out of some of our larger buildings or an elevated fire attack. So what would happen if you needed an aerial and there wasn't one, we don't have one here? Right now we would um, ask one of our surrounding communities to bring one. It's going to take longer to get there and it may not be in as effective a position because we're going to have other equipment that's in its way. Now uh, this engine, uh, which area does it serve? Uh, which area of the community? Engine 3 uh, it runs out of station number 3. Station number 3 is at back in North Territorial. That, uh, that fire station services the west side of the township, basically everything west of Sheldon Road. Oh, this is my fire engine then. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, so very important. <laughs> Let's talk more about that. So, Chief, how often uh, does this truck go out on an average day? Um, one of our fire trucks responds probably three to four times every day. And what are these calls for? What would be a reason that the truck would go out into the community? Um, a lot of the times, uh, the vast majority of our runs are EMS calls and the fire truck would back it up to keep the truck in service if a fire run was to come in while an EMS call was going on. The other things they respond to are motor vehicle accidents, hazardous materials, spills. Um, you may have seen in the news large tanker uh, rollover on M14, they'd go out on that, carbon monoxide in your home. Um, so much more than fires. Much more than the fires. Building collapse, cars in the houses, gas leaks, the list goes on and on. We have a, roughly about 100 fires a year in Plymouth Township. Mm -hmm. And what would be some of the supports you would offer going on these calls when you go out into the community? What are the firefighters doing? What is, what is their role? Um, you know, keeping people safe, managing their medical emergency, cutting people out of cars with the jaws of life that are kept on fire engines, you know, mitigating uh, chemical spills, um, evacuating buildings for gas uh, spills, protecting wires down, making sure people don't, you know, touch wires that are down on the street. We're almost a jack of all trade. Anything that you don't know how to solve, you're going to call the fire department to come and solve your problem. Can you tell us a little bit about the average annual maintenance cost for a truck like this? Um, well, when trucks are newer and in their, their service life of 15 to 20 years, 
we would average a cost of probably between five and seven thousand dollars a year. This last year, that truck, engine three, was about twenty-seven thousand dollars in maintenance. Engine three is currently twenty-six years old. It was uh, purchased in uh, nineteen ninety-two, same year I hired on in the department, and so it has exceeded its service life, its recommended service life by six years. So what, wait. what is the recommended service life of a fire engine? Uh, 15 years in a frontline capacity, meaning you know running out every single day, mm-hmm. and then another five years after that as a reserve role. So now that we're six years over that recommended amount, is there any precedent for how long this actual engine could last? Uh, no, this engine could go out of service and be done t- tomorrow. If something breaks on it that can't be re- re- repaired, it would be out of service forever. And when uh, it is being repaired, uh, you know, and it's out of service, how long is it is it out for? Like, you know, uh, on average, on average, that truck can be down for three days to seven days to two weeks. All of the equipment on that is no longer manufactured, so we have to hope that somebody has something available. Um, we've had three major repairs just this year where we had to manufacture parts that. Uh, that aren't being manufactured anymore. We had to special custom order them. So how does everybody work when they don't have that needed equipment available to them during that time frame? When right now when we have an engine down, we divide we put one engine on the west side and one engine on the east side and one of the other fire stations, um, either station 1 or station 2 would go without an engine and it would just have to do service a larger area taking longer to get to the scene. Have we ever had a period of time uh, where we've actually gone without two engines, um, or, or no? We have. We've uh, we've had two engines break down uh, multiple times, uh, multiple times this year, last year. Um, that's what happens when you have such an old fleet. Um, our newest fire truck is 18 years old. Um, our oldest fire truck is almost 30 years old. So our newest truck is 18 years old. It's only two years away from the recommended. Um, amount of time for it to even like the service life of the vehicle. That's correct. So what are some of the features uh, that would be in a new fire engine uh, that aren't currently, uh, that they aren't, aren't currently exist in the uh, actual pumper trucks besides different types of trucks? Well, in engine three specifically, uh, one of the things is class A firefighting foam. Uh, we don't have any, we don't have a built-in foam system. So any foam we generate with this truck we have to set up special equipment first, which takes time away from fighting the fire. It doesn't have a, uh, a generator, um, which we would have on a new engine. It doesn't have a lot of the safety. Just think about it. This is a truck that was built in 1992. A lot of the safety features that have come about in the last 26 years are not on this vehicle. This truck has a pump that's all operated by levers. There's no computer that runs this. Um, newer fire trucks, all of this is run by a computer that determines the flow of water and if one line gets shut down it adjusts the flow out of another line automatically. Right now uh, an operator has to do this all manually. Does the age of the fleet affect the speed with which you can uh, attack the problem? Uh, yes, it does because uh, you know an older truck doesn't operate as efficient, efficiently. The pump wears out over time. We've rebuilt this pump, but you can only rebuild them so many times, and they do not push out as much water as they get older. Everything gets looser, and it doesn't push out the water that a new truck would pu- uh, push out. This truck here only puts out 1,250 gallons per water per minute. A newer truck could push out 1,500 gallons per minute or 2,000 gallons per minute. So this truck is six years over its life, uh, does not work as well, uh, and there was $27,000 put into maintenance in this past year. Uh, How much... uh, And the year's not over. And the year's not over. How much would it take uh, to purchase a new new engine? A new engine to replace this would be about, um, if we were to not buy an aerial, would it be a a little over $600,000 probably about $650,000 in today's dollars. Obviously that cost will go up um, next year when we have, uh, you know, changes to, uh, you know, manufacturer costs go up. Speaking of manufacturers, one thing I've appreciated learning about these fire engines you have is that you always buy from the same manufacturer to keep some commonality going on with the fleet. 
and establishing that relationship with the manufacturer. Um, so these are uh, this is a Pierce, just like the other two. Yes, all three of our vehicles are Pierce, and why we like Pierce is, A, we only have to teach our firefighters one truck to work with. Um, the trucks are designed the same way. This allows our firefighters, when they're operating on a scene, to know how the truck will operate, to be comfortable with it, to build in that muscle memory to operate on the same type of vehicle. Um, we also have great service in this area with this vehicle. So we have a good relationship with the service company and uh, they take very good care of us. If you were approved for a new uh, engine, how long would it take from the approval to it actually being up and running in the fleet? Right now it takes about 10 to 10 and a half months to get an engine approved, go through all the engineering designs, have it built and delivered to Plymouth Township. You mean you can't just go to the fire truck dealership and buy one off the lot? No, there are there are no fire, well there are dealerships but they don't make these on an assembly line. Uh -huh. um, every truck is custom made. So I would imagine that since the trucks have been maintained this long that the firefighters do a lot of work to maintain the equipment and keep it in good condition and take care of it. Uh, yes, our, our firefighters check these trucks every single day, um, making sure that they are ready to go at a moment's notice, which is why we're able to keep a truck so much longer than the recommended life is because our firefighters do a lot of good work keeping these trucks in service. So there's a potential if a new engine was purchased that that would be well spent money because that would be something that could be taken care of for a long period of time. Uh, yes, we've proven that we take care, good care of these vehicles and we would continue to take good care of uh, the property of our citizens. Considering how old they are, I'm amazed when I see them driving around how beautiful they look. They, they really are polished and shined up. As I say, our firefighters you know, take great pride in maintaining the equipment they work with um, because it protects our citizens' lives and their own. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please email me at the address shown below or visit the Plymouth Township website, also shown below.